Hello guys, welcome back to Tech Talk. Today we will be going over system Verilog constraints and interview questions related to it. By the end of this video, we would have covered syntax of constraints, placement of constraint block, soft constraints, types of constraints, post and pre-randomization functions, simulation overhead of constraint solver, and four interview questions. If you are interested only in the interview questions, Please skip to that section. The constraint block starts with constraint keyword followed by some name for the constraint. All the conditions must be put inside the curly braces. There is no semicolon to be put at the end of the curly brace. Conditions themselves should end with semicolons. Below are two examples of constraints. Constraints are placed after declaring variables and objects. Note that the variables that are being constrained must be declared as rand or randc variables. If a variable has conflicting constraint, that will result in constraint solver error and the test will end abruptly. On the screen, we can see one example of constraint solver error. On the left hand side, we have a test class which runs the sequence drive pin sequence. The implementation of the sequence is on the right hand side. Inside the sequence, random variable mode is constrained to have a value of 0 or 1. When the sequence is called from the test, the mode variable is constrained to have a value of 2. Here we can see conflicting constraints and this will result in constraint solver error. To avoid the error, we can modify the constraint as soft constraint. Constraint solver will comply with soft constraint conditions as long as there is no conflicting constraint. Relational operators such as equal to, greater than, less than, etc. can be used inside constraint block. Inside keyword is used to select a value from a pool of values. Dist keyword is used to generate distribution on random variables. Unique keyword is used to generate unique values on array members or on a pool of variables. If else condition and for each loops are used inside constraint block in order to better handle the constraint. This can be used to write complex constraints. Solve before constraint is used to enforce ordering on constraint solver. Function call can also be done from inside the constraint block. Complex constraints can take a toll on simulation speed. We can use solve before construct or post randomization function to overcome this burden. Alternatively, we can have a lookup table of all possible solver outcomes and use it for each randomization. Consider a question to generate a prime number between 0 to 255. Two solutions are presented on the screen. In the first solution, each prime function is used. And in the second solution, we have a lookup table. In the first solution, with each randomization, computation is done to generate the prime number whereas in the second solution we simply pick up one of the many possible prime numbers which one do you think is faster in simulation second question is to randomly generate 4kb aligned addresses what this means is we need to come up with the address which is starting address of core 4kb memory chunks we know that 10 bits are needed to represent 1 kilobytes of memory. Therefore, 12 bits are needed to represent 4 kilobytes of memory. So the first 4KB memory chunk will have an address ranging from 0 to FFF. Second 4KB region will have address ranging from 1000 to 1 FFF. And third KB region will have address ranging from 2000 to 2 FFF. From this, we can deduce that 11 down to 0 of starting address of any 4KB memory chunk will all be 0. Hence, we can come up with B 
below constraint. Next question is to generate 32 bit random number with only one bit set and we are not supposed to use dollar count once. The approach is to randomly select the position where the bit will be set and then generate 32 bit number from it. Below two solutions are given. Which one do you think is faster in terms of simulation time? All right. The last question is to generate 32 bit random number with no two consecutive bits set. The solution employs for each loop to make sure that two consecutive bits are not one. Design verification is a vast uh, subject and there are a lot of things to cover such as assertion, constraints, UVM, classes, polymorphism, etc. Please provide your topic of interest so that I can make a video on it. Thank you and have a good day. Bye-bye.